What I'm going to do now is give you a little bit of a, an explanation or an example of reading an unseen text using uh, Arlington Park by Rachel Cusk from the 2010 Literature Waste Paper. Uh, what I'll be doing is just highlighting some things that might be of interest to you and uh, this could help you to see how on the run and on the fly you can, uh, you can see some ideas emerge from, um, from a text when you're under pressure. First things first, I would always get you um, to have a look at the contextual information at the top. Pay attention to that. So here we have an extract from a novel that's important. That tells you that this text is part of a much larger text. It invites you in some, in sometimes to consider what the, what the wider novel might be about. It's called Arlington Park, written in 2006 by English novelist Rachel Cusk. Paying attention to this gives us a sense of the context. An English context, presumably, and uh, a contemporary one, 2006. Now, I would also then go straight down to the bottom and read the ending, just to pay attention to where this is going. The reason I would do that is because the examiner wants us to pay attention to that. Uh, the examiner has chosen this is the place to end it, both in terms of the length of the text, but uh, this becomes a bit of a self-contained piece by where it ends. So it's good to see where it's going. You're not reading this for pleasure. You're not trying to unravel a mystery here. You're trying to see where it's going so that while you're reading it, you, are, um, you can have that thought of where it's going, where it's going to end. The first thing that strikes me is the mothers. We're not given much uh, information. We're not given any sense of who they are. They're just this, this abstract whole. And as you read through this, you'll see that this idea of abstraction is, is an idea that comes through quite loudly in it. We have this, they, they walk slowly along the far edge. And the word abstraction is here. Abstracted pilgrimage behind the tricycles. It's almost like a religious event. And so when I continue reading here, I see this other word here, processional grandeur, that comes out. And against this, we're seeing, that the, uh, seeing this setting, but it's not emerging a lot through imagery. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting, I think, in how it's being written. It's uh, this word distance here, the distance of the playground miniature. In this first paragraph, I get a sense that these uh, mothers are removed from their surroundings, whether physically or emotionally or spiritually, if you will. Um, and so we have the tiny shapes of children in red and yellow and blue. There's a uniform about them. And that then we get this language that keeps coming up in the text. The seesaw went up and down. Children climbed the ladder and went down. Slowly the procession moved towards the clockwork mechanism of the playground. This imagery here of repetition, mechanised repetition even, is important. And at this stage, you don't uh, ease off on trying to, um, to get to the bottom of that. Observe it, pay attention to the fact that it's there, and as you move along, then let the ideas come to you. We're then brought into this interesting image of the man in shorts came running around again. The old man consulted his watch 55 seconds, he said to his wife. Again, we have this clockwork, man running around and being timed by somebody else. All the life that's being introduced here, all the action is around clockwork, mechanism, up and down, uh, seesaws. It's all very, very controlled. Then in this paragraph, we have a kind of chaos introduced. And this contrast, this juxtaposition of the animals with the, with the women, the women with the children, there's these constant uh, playing out of opposites and contrasts in this, um, in this text. But here we get this rich paragraph. That, and observe the syntax here. We get some very long sentences here. From every side of the park, more dogs came, little cantering dogs, big golden dogs, and so forth here. This sentence here is quite long. Then let's look at the next sentence. Again, quite a long sentence. There's a long syntax here. And so if we compare that to what came before it up here, the sentences here are, uh, are generally much shorter and a lot more direct. And so the, the syntax, the language in this, uh, in this paragraph here, introduces a liveliness that we see from the introduction of the dogs. But the interesting thing here is that the humans in this image 
are serving the dogs. It's almost like the dogs are the ones in control. I got the impression at the top as well, at the beginning, that the children were somewhat in control. They're this processional grandeur, the abstracted pilgrimage by the tricycles. It's almost like these mothers, rather than being mothers, are servants to the children. Uh, there's not. It's clearly not a sense of happiness in that. And so, but then we have this contrast here in the playground. The women did not call. So we have this contrast of life and interaction between the dogs and their owners, and then the mothers and their children, where there's a, a strong kind of separation. And then we get this next full paragraph that begins. They push their children back and forth, noting that that mechanical language that we keep seeing here. They move self-consciously, red cheeks, the wind whipping their hair. They seemed confusedly disconsolate. Disconsolate. What an interesting, what an interesting uh, term to use here. Confusedly disconsolate. So this isn't simply about being unhappy and being mothers. That on the one hand they're unhappy, but on the other hand they are. There's, uh, as, as the word there is, there's a confusion in the life of the mothers. And we can look at that when we look at a bigger reading of the text. It wasn't that they couldn't decide what they were. They felt stiff and clumsy amidst the swings and seesaw. Yet their feelings were new and raw, like the feelings their children, or they supposed their children to have. But now we get this, inter this interesting use of question here. And so this narrator that's observing, uh, the, this is expressing perhaps the thoughts of the mothers in the playground. What would become of them? Where would they go? Where would the world uh, would the world close to them? This is the question that you can ask yourself. Why is the world closed to them? I think you can logically work your way to a conclusion that's been brought to you here, and that's that the world's closed to them because now in this they're they're trapped in this world of motherhood, and so now we can get a gender reading. There's a clear gender reading being offered here, and what does motherhood mean for women? And as a reader, we might even question. What were these women before they became mothers? Uh, looking at this, there's something very middle class about this uh, that, that I see. Perhaps it's the uniforms of the children. Uh, and it makes me wonder if these mothers were working women before they became mothers and it, in this world, in this society, that uh, that's taken away from them. And so then we get a sense that Rachel Cusk is offering a critique of modern Western culture. And then we have at the end here, oh, to be an animal. There's a longing. There's a longing to be this mad kinetic creature. And so what we then get is this contrast throughout the text between um, this uh, primal, uh, natural chaos of the animals. We saw that in the early description of how they, they, they messed up the lines and so forth on the ground. Um, and so this contrast between these mad kinetic animals and the, uh, the children in their uniforms and going up and down. So what this thing can lead us to is, uh, is to look at the children themselves. They're not really, we don't see much of them. But perhaps Rachel Cusk is talking about these, um, these swings and seesaws as this early kind of way of inculcating the children into this society of control that one day they're going to become mothers who then have to serve their children at the playground. It's a very, uh, very miserable kind of image we see here. But then what we can get from this is the underlying ideas and the meanings, perhaps, that Cusk is driving towards and that we can take away from it. That this is a critique of Western culture and how that our notions of motherhood are a social and cultural construction and that we, uh, we have all these symbols that reinforce that, the playground, uh, going back to that, the clockwork mechanism of the playground, that the children will one day uh, become part of this world of their mothers and, and it will, the cycle will repeat itself. So I hope that helps you just to be able to see from a text like this how the language can be drawn out to see some big ideas that you can then write under pressure in an hour. Good luck with that. And uh, 